every day I'm shuffling. This episode of the Coin Spice Podcast is brought to you by Cash Shuffle. Because what you do with your money is your business. To give this new product a try for fungibility and privacy, head on over to electroncash.org, download their latest wallet 4.0.0, and give it a spin. Cashshuffle.com for more information, because what you do with your money is your business. is really going on crypto savages you are listening to the coin spice podcast with host c edward kelso editor-in-chief at coinspice.io your home for spicy crypto things on the net what is really going on crypto savages this is your host c edward kelso editor-in-chief out at coinspice.io back with another episode of the Coin Spice podcast, and wow, do I have a guest for you this time around? It's Yonald Fuchball. He is the enigmatic developer, essayist, thought leader, investor, business person, and I know, I know he gets embarrassed when I call him this, but he's also a historic figure. Um, really, how many people can say they participated actively and were instigators of uh, the most successful fork? Um, of the world's first cryptocurrency, and I'm, of course, calling uh, and recalling rather uh, Bitcoin Cash relative to the old gray lady, Bitcoin Core BTC. Um, Fukeball is one of these guys that does not put himself out there in terms of uh, public appearances and giving interviews a whole lot. So to grab him was 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 a, certainly a, a treat, and to be able to talk to him, flesh him out a bit. Uh, you know, kind of round him out a bit in terms of getting a sense of who he is and why he does what he does. Uh, I think is uh, is is very 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 important. Um, I do take him back uh, through his initial involvement, uh, all through where we are today, and then we pivot into the future. Um, I get his opinions, of course, along the way on different controversies, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. Uh, whether you're an investor. Uh, whether you're you know, just someone who's interested in peer-to-peer cash or you just kind of want to learn more about the history of, of cryptocurrency, uh, this, this particular episode uh, goes a long way in helping um, all of that. So without any further ado, I give you Yonald Fuqua. Thank you so much uh, for all the work you've done, all the, all the, all the time and effort and sweat, uh, being out there in the public, uh, the battles, the fights. Uh, to bring uh, peer-to-peer cash um, alive and and to and to in some cases help it help it thrive. So I wanted to get that out of the way. Do do my fanboy thing. And uh, yeah, thank, you. <laughs> thank you to hear that actually because you know a lot of times we just kind of work. You know us that are working in crypto, working behind you know behind the scenes, and we don't uh, we don't get to uh, to be appreciated as much as maybe we should be. So. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that, and that's part of the part of the series, you know, part of part of doing this and documenting you guys. So, um, super super appreciated. Um, I I know a little bit because again, I am um, a fan of your work and especially of your writings. Um, I, I kind of know your history just being a fan, um, but for folks that maybe aren't familiar with uh, with your your journey um, uh, to becoming a, a developer of Note. T- take us back to the the time of 2013, right? So we're in the second Obama administration, um, four years from the, uh, the the roughly from the Genesis block. Um, how do you how do you discover Bitcoin? What what are you doing then, and and what impressions does it does it immediately leave on you? Yeah, so I, I remember hanging out with a friend of mine. I think we were on a business trip or something, you know, in, the, in a hotel or something. And he said, "Hey, you know, have you heard of Bitcoin?" I think we were talking about like payment methods, different <laughs> different ways that our businesses could, um, you know, could deal with things, credit card and PayPal. And he said, "Hey, have you heard of Bitcoin?" And I think I had seen it on some checkout page, but I had assumed that it was just another, you know, uh, centralized system or whatever. And, uh, you know, I said, well, yeah, I think I've heard of that. And, uh, 
my friend was was all excited. He's like, dude, this is <laughs> this is like uh, you you know, there's no chargebacks and it's it's this thing where like you know it, it just arrives instantly and everyone knows it. I'm like, what? This is crazy. <laughs> so I started looking into it and um, the reading the white paper was a was a kind of a surreal experience because you're at least for me when I was reading it, it's like wow, this is like you know it, it's so new that it's hard to know how much of it you really understand. I don't know if you can relate to what I'm saying, but. Oh, for sure. For sure. <laughs> yeah, it's like, I, I don't know if I fully get this, but it, it seems like amazing. Like there's these, you know, miners or, you know, there, there's this competition and it's, it's this beautiful incentive system. So I was, I was pretty excited about it. And I, I just had the feeling like this could be really, really big. And, and it's kind of one of those things like people say, well, it's a, um, it's a humanitarian project that's disguised as a, <laughs> as a get rich quick scheme. So I, I always like that aspect of Bitcoin that, it was sort of a win-win with uh, the people that invest in it um, can profit while at the same time uh, are growing this new network that can, that can help change the world for the better. So, and, yeah. And yeah. so do, do, do you have any, because I, I remember something about you having been an entrepreneur or, or a businessman uh, during that time. Uh, so you were kind of, you know, doing your own thing uh, in terms of the hustle, right? Yeah, I mean, I won't go into exactly what kind of businesses, um, but but uh, yeah, I've been uh, self-employed since like you know 2004 or so. Uh, before that, I was a software developer. I've gotten so far out of the <laughs> the software thing when I when I started you know um, you know being an entrepreneur that I sort of feel like I lost a lot of my programming chops, but I still kind of have that background, so that's part of the reason why I was able to, you know, understand as much as I can about different Bitcoin things and, it, you know, it kind of having some technical background definitely helped me to um, contribute to, to Bitcoin and, you know, the software side of things. And your, your worldview generally, um, you know, we, we tend to be, not in every case for sure, but uh, we tend to be kind of cranky libertarian types, uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe former gold bugs, uh, these sorts of things. Did, did, I mean, because to me, the the software background and the uh, the entrepreneurial side, that's just a perfect storm for for Bitcoin. But um, did you also yeah. have that that crankier, you know, monetary <laughs> idea or no? Yeah, I, I, I you know I've been a, a registered libertarian for as long as I was you know of voting age. So oh wow, I, I guess a perfect storm, all the ingredients, right? Um, for sure. So yeah, and it was. Uh, I don't know if I was cranky. I guess I guess I kind of was in the sense like, <laughs> when, when I was. Sorry, go ahead. No, I was, I was just laughing. Uh, <laughs> when I was uh, a younger man, you know, just coming out of college, or you know, even when I was in college, I would, I would proselytize and try to convince people about how you know <laughs> how bad the system is and the government and you know the the parasitical nature of politicians and bureaucracies and. I pretty much got nothing but hate and <laughs> ridicule for, for trying to uh, toe that line. So at some point, I just kind of gave up trying to convince people. I, I just kind of accepted that, hey, the, the world is, is pretty messed up. It's not likely to change. Um, and I'm just going to, you know, do as well for myself as I can with, within this crazy world. Um, but then when Bitcoin came along, it was like, holy crap, this, this is something that actually could – um, you know, make a, make a change, you know, have an impact. I think the internet's had an impact as well in general, you know, but, but Bitcoin is maybe even more of a, more of a paradigm shift. Yeah. It really is one of those, those revelatory experiences and, and I don't have the technical chops and I remember <clears throat> attempting to read the white paper and it was, it might've well, you know, just been written in French or so Healy. Um, but parts of it, from me stood out and they jumped out to me. And then people um, like yourself who um, had, you know, somewhat of a technical background and, and could, you know, sort of divine what was being said and some of the problems that it potentially solved. Um, it really did. It, 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 it was one of those, um, this is really, you know, I'm putting a lot on it, but I, I really kind of saw it 
at least initially, and I, I still kind of cling to this, but as almost a hinge of history that you can kind of see, you know, a, a pre Bitcoin world and a post Bitcoin world. Hmm. Um, so yeah, it, it, yeah, it, it definitely hit me hard, hard as well. Cause we have similar backgrounds in, in terms of worldview. So yeah, very, very cool. And then that, that leads you to get involved in, uh, Bitcoin, um, what we would now call Bitcoin core or, or BTC. And you become a somewhat prominent figure, uh, during the, the 2000, what would become the 2017, uh, fork. Um, August of, of, of that year, what, what, I, I, again, I, I know the answer, but what about Bitcoin cash, what would become Bitcoin cash um, drew you to it? And, and why, I guess, why didn't you stay with conversely um, Bitcoin core? Yeah. So um I have been uh, pretty active on the BitcoinTalk.org uh, Bitcoin forum, which was pretty much the Bitcoin forum. <laughs> and you and you had, uh, you know, I'm not sure if people listening to this have different knowledge of the whole history of events. Um, but there's there was this huge uh, scaling debate, which pretty much started in 2013. Um, when you had people like uh, Peter Todd and Greg Maxwell uh, basically saying that we need to keep the block small, we, you know, we, we will have problems. It won't be decentralized anymore. If we, you know, we should try to do these uh, second layers. And, and, and just to interrupt, that's a really good point that I think gets glossed over too much is that that debate actually went on for a solid four years, right? The, the, yeah. the, the debate that you're now talking about. Right. Yeah, so, you know, and at the time in 2013, I don't think a lot of people realized or, or believed that um, we would really just stay at one megabyte. That was sort of um, unheard of. And then uh, over time, the uh, the Overton window <laughs> got moved. If, if you're not familiar with, with that concept, it's um, – it's just kind of a concept about how, how things go from being unacceptable to maybe, well, we can debate it to being kind of middle of the road. And then it just, you know, opinion goes from one side to the other. And then combined with like the censorship, like the, that uh, Bitcoin talk, like they would, like there was this uh, client called XT when that came out that um, Mike Hearn published. And uh, it was basically, like we'll we increase the block size, but only if 75% of the, the network's running it. But even discussing that was like banned <laughs> on our big, or it was moved to the altcoin section. So people really wouldn't see it or whatever. And so they, they, you know, they controlled this whole narrative that we need to like keep the blocks at one megabyte. And um, eventually, uh, you know, the community forked off because it just wasn't, you know, we, we were hoping not to split and, we can, you know, increase the blocks on the BTC network, uh, and that didn't happen. There, there was a, there was many attempts. There was the, the uh, Hong Kong agreement, where a bunch of miners and core developers got together, and um, I think, if my memory serves correct, I think Adam Back uh, agreed, and then <laughs> Greg Maxwell called him a dipshit on online, so you can't agree yeah. to that. You know? <laughs> And uh, so, and then after that, there was the New York agreement with the Segwit 2X, where uh, they said, "Okay, well, we'll we'll increase, we'll do a hard fork later to two megabytes if we if you know everyone accepts uh, Segwit first. And you know, most of us recognize that th this was kind of a bait and switch. That they had no intention of of uh, giving them you know a two megabyte hard fork. And um, it didn't really have support anyway because by that time Bitcoin Cash had already forked off. So, you know, people from the big block side and also the small block side didn't want Segwit 2x, so that failed. But anyway, so that, you know, it just ended up being Bitcoin Cash. And so, yeah, the whole point is that you, you can't uh, scale a global uh, cash system with one megabyte blocks. It's pretty simple. So they, you know, the the BTC camp has their roadmap, which is pretty much turned into the Lightning Network. 
Yeah. Uh, but there's there's a ton of problems with the Lightning Network. I mean, don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's all, a whole other topic, yeah. Yeah, I mean, the biggest problem with the Lightning Network, in my opinion, is the liquidity. Um, you just can't – there's no real way to – um, have everyone making payments that they want to make without splitting. Your, I mean, it's like you have to end up splitting your funds into a bunch of different channels and it's just a mess. So it just doesn't work. Right. I actually tried to like figure out how it could work, uh-huh. you know, and then I ended up deciding it can't work. <laughs> and then I wrote that article about, um, you know, like a mathematical proof why, why the lightning can't scale unless, unless you have big centralized hubs. Yeah, those those medium posts are, are gold, and they're they're definitely uh, required reading. But when you say scale, when we use words like scale, I'm I'm always wary that that you know newer people who are listening, you know, kind of hear that word a million times, and it it sort of becomes uh, rote. But w- when when we say scale, what essentially we're talking about is adoption. That that if a bunch of people were to rush in and begin using this merchants or you know however you want to interpret. Uh, what adoption means, where the network is actually, um, you know, employed uh, through through a large number of people and, and, and use cases, um, there's a very good chance, as we saw in the run up in late 2017. Ironically, right after uh, the, the 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 fork, uh, relatively speaking, um, where you see a bunch of people rushing to you know make use of it, only to find that it's slow, clunky, and expensive. Am, am I am I kind of putting a better spin on what scale means? Yeah, I mean, well, you, you know, you, and I don't, I'm not, like, trying to make this into a let's bash lightning. I mean, those guys could, <laughs> you know, do their do their little tinkering of lightning all day long. But I, I guess what I mean is that, sure, like, some people will say, well, lightning works. I just made a lightning payment. Okay, it, like, works for, you know, if you in in these little specific cases, but it doesn't. It's not a replacement for Bitcoin. It's not a replacement, or not a good one anyway, <laughs> for for just using the system and being able to send money. Um, you know, I'll quote I'll quote Roger Veer. He says, you know, I can send money to anyone anywhere in the world almost for free. So I, I think that kind of sums up what Bitcoin is really all about. Yeah, and that uh, that that takes us then through Bitcoin Cash is the is the successful uh, as far as um, I think most people in in the, if they were being honest would say is uh, really the only successful fork of of Bitcoin uh, BTC and it becomes a you know a, you know something that people get excited about and you're one of a handful of people to have participated in this uh, it's pushing forward there's adoption. Um, always debate, but you know, it's there's there's kind of a momentum going, a momentum going. The market, let's say, bubbles. The speculative market bubbles, uh, bursts, and you know, prices come down a little bit more to sanity. And then there's a, another debate inside of Bitcoin Cash uh, that turns kind of ugly. Hey, crypto savages! This is C. Edward Kelso, breaking in with a quick and very shameless plug. Coinspice.io is a feisty pirate ship. We depend, rely on almost entirely organic growth, which means our audience really does the marketing for us. And there's nothing more powerful than word of mouth. If you read an article you like on Coinspice.io, if you listen to a podcast and you enjoy the content, or if you're just pissed, please (laughs) promote us on social media, wherever you're at, wherever that is, whether it's Reddit, whether it's uh, YouTube, uh, Telegram, uh, you know, you name it, Twitter, like us, retweet, all that great stuff. You can always find detailed show notes for every podcast on the corresponding page at coinspice.io. There you'll find links to our respective podcast, your favorite platform like iTunes. Please give us a, a, a rating. Please give us a subscribe. You know all that good stuff. It helps the pirate ship remain afloat. It keeps us going. We appreciate it. As always, you can contact me personally if you have questions, concerns, you want to hear from a particular guest, you have a news tip at Kelso, K-E-L-S as in Sam O, at Coinspice.io. Thanks again for listening. We sure do appreciate it. And back to the episode. Results in a, a contentious hard fork 
and an eventual split into another project. And during that time, a lot of us, especially on the media side who were documenting it, um, could sense the panic, could sense the, 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 the frustration within the, the broader, on uh, both sides of, of the Bitcoin Cash community about what this would, would mean. And not long after the fork, you posted um, um, kind of, kind of a, 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 I don't know how to phrase it, uh, frame it, but you, you basically laid out why divorce is maybe a good thing in this case um, from, from people who very many considered toxic. Uh, can you? Are you talking about the November, the original fork of Bitcoin Cash in 2017? Uh, yeah, I'm talking about the most recent fork where, so we're so we're a year and change into Bitcoin Cash, and there is a hash war. Oh, and, okay. Yeah, and so you know the the project uh, splits again. We have Bitcoin Cash as as the ticker. It moves on. Exchanges, you know, kind of acknowledge that more or less. Um, and, you know, after it, both prices are just, you know, plummeting. Uh, Bitcoin Cash seems uh, almost dead uh, late, uh, late 2018 uh, in terms of, the, again, the, the speculative price. And I, I, was, I was really surprised by your Medium post because right after that, you were like, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. You know, everybody just calm down. <laughs> this could be a good thing in the sense that it was you know, uh, making Bitcoin cash clearer for some and then divorcing the community well, from toxic actors. But I, go ahead. Hey, let's be clear. It wasn't a good thing. I, I, I was trying to uh, show the silver lining. Um, okay. The, the, good, the good aspect is that, you know, yeah, we're rid of the, the people that, that wanted to disrupt us and, you know, um, basically be either either be the boss of Bitcoin cash or, or burn it down or whatever. So, um, yeah, that, that wasn't a good thing, but it, it's, uh, I feel like we just got some vindication, uh, because BSV has, has now been delisted. It's like they, they just went too far, you know, what you reap, you sow. So <laughs> all, all, all this, uh, bullying and stuff has really come back and fight those people. And, uh, and, but not only that, it's really good for Bitcoin cash because it's sort of, Here's how I look at it. Like before that, before the fork, the hash war, Bitcoin Cash was really like the peer-to-peer -peer cash version of Bitcoin. And we had a ton of momentum. And then when the hash war happened, it's sort of like, okay, now there's like two versions of Bitcoin Cash. And so how do we know that you're even the right, you know, one or... Right. And it also kind of cast doubt on the whole forking like you know the, the the btc guys will say well you know you're just going to keep forking right that that's why we don't have hard forks in btc so it, it sort of lent a, a little bit of credence to their theory that you know right. even i was starting to doubt like well maybe this there's something to that and then okay now the, now the whole delist bsv thing happens and it's like oh okay well now everyone recognizes no, the community didn't split. It was just a bunch of assholes attacking us. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it, it really, you know, BCH was the truth the whole time. That That's kind of like how I mean, that's my biased view, but I, I think that's going to play out in the, in the longer or medium to long term. that, yeah, it's still Bitcoin cash. And that's, you know, we're, we're still the OG Bitcoin. So Yeah. Right. And so I was, I was going to ask uh, about the, the delisting idea um, any, any thought about the, you know, the, the potential dangers there? Uh, I, I think your, your, your medium post was, was sort of vindicated ironically without any help from the Bitcoin cash community that was supposedly so at odds with BSV, uh, um, right. it, it BSV just kind of, or at least the, the people who, who claim to be representing it, um, just in a classic case of overplaying their hand did so and then a broader community that again is it wasn't us as far as i right. can see um yeah you're right sort of, sort of sort of shut them down it, do you do you well again it, it remains to be seen how it plays out but do you, do you think there's a maybe a dangerous precedence with uh, 
or precedent being set rather with uh, the likes of the the exchanges? Or um, you kind of answered already, but but what do you think? Yeah, about- that's a good question. I mean, yeah. No, first of all, I agree with you. It wasn't from the the, the Bitcoin Cash people, and and it kind of pisses me off that it was done for like the wrong reasons. Like uh, there was this lawsuit against the ABC developers, right? Completely ridiculous, and. I mean, it, unprecedented as far as like, okay, we're going to sue open source developers, but where's the outcry for that? No, we're going to be out, we're going to instead be outra- outraged over uh, suing this like random cat guy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, and, and really, and in truth, to your point, they weren't even really suing him. They sent him a letter, right? Right. Well, they did put a bounty to dox him, so that that was not cool. Oh, no, you're right. You're right. So that was not cool. But but there was, I mean, the suing ABC, actually suing them, is it was is way more uncool. So sure. that kind of pisses me off a little bit. But uh, yeah, as far as like delisting, I mean, it is a free market. So if you know, and exchanges do have a lot of power. Um, does it set a bad precedent? Uh, maybe a little bit. I don't. I don't think exchanges should be uh, necessarily throwing their weight around like that, um, especially in such an unprincipled manner. Like, let's ignore the one lawsuit. But, but you know, uh, I think in this case it's okay. I don't think it's. Uh, <laughs> it is. It I, is. I think it's. I think it's. I think it's a good thing overall that they did that. Yeah, and I, I like the fact that we can have the discussion inside of the community, at least, uh, on places like RBTC and elsewhere, um, where, where you know, we can all sort of say, well, yeah, you know, we might like the outcome, but what about the process and go back and forth? And I, I think it's an important discussion to have as we, you know, whether we favor <clears throat> proof of work and miners or we, you know, we, we, cha- we champion the dev community or all above, all of the above or the biz dev side or or the exchanges, uh, it is interesting to see, you know, that, that balance of power, um, you know, who's calling balls and strikes. I'm, I'm trying to think of all the d- different metaphors here uh, come to fruition. And it, it, it seems to me anytime someone goes too far in one direction, it's all about miners. That's, uh, that's it. That's, the, that's all we need to be, or it's all about devs. That's it. Or it's all about, you know, thought leaders. That's all we need to be, or exchanges. It seems to me that the, the community, I don't know, shows its resilience in the sense that, you know, all these different heads can come and, and, uh, and I guess countervail each other. I'm not sure what I'm trying to say, but anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, a lot of these things are very nuanced and, and you know, multifaceted. So yeah. There, okay. Well, speaking of, go ahead. you know, there's some truth to what everyone's saying. There's some truth to what the core guys say. There's, you know, there's even some truth to what, uh, you know, the BSV guys are saying, uh, in, you know, in a certain limited way, but yeah. Um, yeah. It's like not an, not a simple cut and dried thing. Well, cool. And I'm, I'm glad to hear you say that. Um, and the, the really the, the, I guess the reason that prompted me to get you on here besides all the things that we've, uh, that we've uh, discussed thus far um, is your latest comparison. You really do look at uh, on medium, some of the other projects um, and you compare them right now in, in real time, basically within the last couple of weeks uh, to Bitcoin cash. And mm. it, can you, can you go into that a little bit and, and which, and why you chose, like, I, I know you chose to compare it to dash and I don't have it in front of me right now. And I'm sorry about that. Uh, but dash. Sure. So I just want to say up front that I'm not saying like, th- this was a pretty one-sided article. You're talking about the Bitcoin cash versus other top coins. Yes. And I purposely did not like, discuss the negative points of Bitcoin cash. And I'm not, there are some negative points of Bitcoin cash. It's not like perfect, but um, yeah, but I am, it obviously is a pro BCH article. And and the reason I'm pro BCH is basically, yeah, I I want peer to peer electronic cash. That was the kind of the promise uh, of the original, you know, when I read the white paper, it talked about a peer to peer electronic cash system. And we know that, BTC kind of screwed that up with with the one megabyte limit, right? So I, you know, it doesn't. It's not like that. Like um, it has to be BCH, but BCH just happens to be the project that kind of fits the best. And and there's also the the network effect. So you can have a, a, a code base that is great, but if no one's using it, um, then it you know it doesn't matter. I mean, Bitcoin Cash works today 
but it's going to work better uh, when there's more people using it because there's going to be higher proof of work and et cetera, right? Right. So, yeah, so I just, I, I guess I chose for that article, I just pretty much looked at like the top 10 coins, like what else is, you know. So, so BTC, yeah, obviously you got the issue with the, um, with the block size. Uh huh. But let me let me phrase it. I, I should have asked a better question of you because then I'm you know for you to have to summarize the, the whole damn thing is not fair. <laughs> okay. uh, but let's let, let me ask let me ask you this because I asked this of Andreas Brecken a while back too. Which which of those projects those those ten that you selected, uh, which one which one do you find the most intriguing? Let's, let's take Bitcoin Cash out of it. Uh, the most interesting. Um, I think Monero is pretty interesting. Uh, cause it's, it's really different. I mean, it's got the crypto note protocol. It's got like, pri- you know, it's got these dark things. So it's definitely very different than Bitcoin. And it, it is pretty cool. Like the privacy features, uh, that being said, I, I don't really, I mean, I, tr- I did use Monero, but I, it, it's so clunky to use that it just, it's not even worth it, the hassle of it. Like just to pull your coins out of cold storage, you need like two full nodes and then it's just, uh, like they don't seem to care about the <laughs> the, the wallet uh, or the user experience that much, so I don't I don't see it going going places. But I still think it's cool technology. And I think that's a nice segue into your a couple of your babies. Uh, one, of course, is the uh, the Light Wallet, uh, the SPV Wallet, uh, Electron Cash, and more recently integrating um, the the, the plug uh, Cash Shuffle. Um, which we've talked about a little bit here uh, on, on the show the last couple of times, um, is is Monero, I mean, so what did what you just say kind of factor into your thinking um, along the lines of, of Electron Cash and, and forking Electrum? Um, it, did, does, it, does it eventually get there with things like Cash Shuffle? Um, seeing, seeing that there's a, like, like you personally even like, uh, or find interesting Monero, um, and you see that there's sort of a demand for something like that. Does 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 that like naturally factor into your development of of Electron Cash? Um, well, I think people want privacy features. That's that's nothing new. Um, so, but as far as like the user friendliness, um, it's sort of almost like the opposite of the Lightning Network. Like people. Some of the BTC trolls, when they see Cash Shuffle, they say, "Oh, well, that's just CoinJoin. That's like not innovating." Right. Okay. Well, it's just CoinJoin, but it's very user friendly and it's it works and it's gonna, you know, versus the Lightning Network is like it's maybe very cool technology, but it, it it's not user friendly and it doesn't work. So what are you gonna choose? The thing that's cool and doesn't work, or the thing that's boring but works? So, um, it, it, at the end of the day, it's all about what works, right? And those, so and those trade-offs. Actual privacy, I mean, Monero is pretty good, but it, we're, we're going to get there uh, eventually with not just Cash Shuffle, but other tools like um, Atomic Swaps. Right. Uh, Mark Lundeberg was talking about there's a, there's a way that we can do uh, like Atomic uh, Swap scripts that you can't even tell it's an Atomic Swap. And we can layer these things together and, and we can have, different kinds of, we can have uh, atomic swaps with, with uh, different SLP tokens. We can do all kinds of things and then like kind of have a, a privacy ecosystem. So when you layer these different things together, it's going to be hard to track people's coins. And that's the whole point, right? Right. And that gives it a, a, almost a cash like feature in the, in the real world uh, and maybe even better, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> Uh, it, yeah, I mean the, the whole thing is um, to make the to make the coins fungible. I mean, there's privacy and there's fungibility, which are two different things that are related. Um, but if everyone's fixing their coins, then it gets very hard to to blacklist coins because everyone's got some taint from everyone else's coins, right? Right, right. It's it, it's a super interesting uh, project, and and we'll link to uh, all these things in the uh, in the show notes. So. Um, I said I was going to keep you for half an hour, and I've already gone uh, over that. And I know you're a terribly, terribly busy guy. So let, let's end on this then. What's what's your thought? What's what's the future look like? So you've been in the space now officially for something like six years. Um, what what do you see 
um, if you had a crystal ball here going forward for crypto, maybe generally, and Bitcoin Cash in particular? Um, I mean, it's so hard to say. It's interesting you asked that because I was watching a video the other day which had like a time-lapsed, someone posted this on Reddit, it's like a time-lapsed view of the top 10 coins. And so starting in 2013, you had these coins like PureCoin and NameCoin, which today are like down, you know, way down the list. They're not relevant anymore. So I, I'm pretty sure that the top 10 coins today are not going to be the top 10 coins three years from now. There probably will be, uh, I mean, there, there's always like the, um, you know, the big winners that have the, the network effect up to now that's been BTC. Hopefully in three years, it'll be BCH, uh, but you know, we don't know. So what, one thing is like in crypto, you got to expect the unexpected. It's just such a fast changing and radical landscape that we really don't know. Uh, we, you know, we can't really imagine the future, but hopefully there'll be some form of peer to peer electronic cash. Hopefully that's Bitcoin cash. Uh, that's, that's getting more and more adoption. And we are seeing that now, which is really cool. Like just certain places, um, Tokyo and North Queensland and uh, as far as BCH in particular. And then I also hear there's a lot of adoption going on in Slovenia, uh, places like that. So I think it starts in specific places and that's how you, that's kind of how you get adoption is, is kind of this little hotbed of, of usage. So hopefully there'll be more of those little, little pockets that open up. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, it's definitely interesting to see Bitcoin cash, uh, and projects like it roll through all of these hits and just keep, you know, coming back, coming back, coming back, and how, how, uh, how resilient, especially uh, the the development teams are um, within the project. So, um, again, man, thank you for for all that you're doing, for all that you've done. Um, you know, this is a this is a real interesting time for all of us. I owe at least, you know, a significant part of my career to people like yourself. Um, so anytime I can have you on and just say thank you is, is, uh, is certainly, uh, something I'll do, but beyond that, man, um, I am rooting for you. I know a lot of us are, whether we're investors or, um, you know, enthusiasts or just, you know, plain old bag holders. Uh, we, we want to see you do well. Uh, thank you again for coming on, man. And I, I wish you all the best. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Thanks uh, for having me on the show. Baby